Alrighty, so before I start, um, if you've got a video of your skiing um, and you want me to give you some free video coaching, send it on through. Um, only catch is I'll probably upload it here for the whole of the internet to see. Especially if you're in the States. I'm having some pretty serious withdrawals not being in the US right now. Um, but yeah, if you've got a video of your skiing, send it to me. We'll, I'll give you some tips and let's get you through a new rope length, hey? So, today's question was... Can you keep talking about the skier path? This is such a good question. This is take number 20, I think, on doing this video. The first one took 40 minutes and I don't even feel like I got the point across clearly. Um, but I'm breaking it up into three categories. So in order to understand the types of calculations that um, an elite skier's mind is making through the slalom course, you've got to kind of understand the three basic dynamics that's happening out there. Um, you've got the path of the ski, You've got the arc of the handle, and then you have your body's location relative to both the boat and the handle. Okay, so let's begin with the path of the ski. I'm going to draw a slalom course on this piece of paper. It's not going to be a good drawing, and it's going to be incredibly exaggerated. Okay, for anybody that has seen a slalom course on Google Earth, they look so easy. <clears throat> They're very stretched out and the buoys are not very wide relative to the length of the slalom course. There's a huge amount of down course slippage. And when everybody, whenever somebody draws a slalom course on a piece of paper, it's always very exaggerated. So here we go. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, here we have some buoys, a boat heading down the slalom course and the skier is gonna go around these buoys, okay? Now, I'm going to draw a representation of a skier running a path through the slalom course that we can all commonly agree is wide and early. Okay, so the skier is heading around first buoy, they're nice and wide into the second buoy, heading across nice and wide again into the third buoy. Okay, here we go. That's a nice wide and early path through the slalom course. Okay, now I'm going to draw a skier that is late and narrow or, I mean, direct, whatever you want to call it. This path that I've just drawn here is pretty direct. So that skier has gone straight there, straight over to this next buoy, and then straight over to the next one, okay? So to understand, to understand the dynamic that we're playing with as the rope gets shortened, obviously it would be really nice to always run a wide and early path through the course, okay? With a huge swing arc, nice um, large sweeping turns that finish at the ball. Obviously you can carry a lot of speed through this turn. The turn itself is not too sharp, so it's reasonably easy from a skill perspective to accomplish. Um, that, that path there looks good. Wide and early, it's great. It's what we teach everybody to do when they're first learning to run the course. The problem arises when you shorten the rope because this skier here, right, with the wide and early path, that person has covered a far greater distance than this bloke here, or girl, who has gone straight from buoy to buoy, okay? And I'm not gonna do this in the video because it was a bit of a fail when I attempted it in the previous 20 versions of this video. Um, but if you were to get a rope, um, an imaginary rope that was say this long, that represents an 11 meter line because from boat guides out to the buoy, it's about 11 meters. And you sort of took that rope and traveled it down the slalom course um, where my thumb is the boat and my finger there is the handle as it sort of goes down the course, it's possible for a rope length this long, which is buoy width, to follow this path here, okay, which is ugh, direct from buoy to buoy with a rope about that long. But if you took this imaginary 11 meter line, um, please do this yourself if you're really interested because it does really help um, get a grasp for it all. But if you took this and you tried to follow this path here, okay, of the wide and early skier, I've now swapped the two ends of the rope, um, at this point here, without me lengthening 
the gap between my fingers, it sort of becomes impossible for the skier to continue running this wide and early path. Um, and hopefully you sort of understood what I was doing there with dragging the imaginary rope down the page. Um, but I've spent far too many hours um, doing these types of things on pieces of paper. And I've even done it with accurate representations of slalom courses, but it's very tricky unless you blow it up huge, which I've also done um, because you're playing with such finite little amounts um, between a wide and early and a late and narrow path if you were to print a slalom course out to scale. Um, so it's far easier represented with an exaggerated slalom course like this. But what you will understand by doing that sort of little experiment that I just attempted to sort of portray with my fingers is that as a basic rule, um, wide and early path is amazing but it's impossible if your rope is short. So hopefully we're all on the same path there where we've got a wide and early path, which is what everybody wants to do, but then we've got um, the laws of physics requiring um, us to go somewhat straight to the buoy as the rope gets shorter. Now, the next part um, in this three part little series is arc, of the handle. I'm feeling good about this video. I think it's going to be the one um, that I actually get through to the end without having to redo it all. Arc of the handle, right? Um, now what I'm drawing on this page is a boat, also drawn poorly, just like the last one. All right, camera's back in focus. Um, so here's our boat, all right? She's struggling. Let's hit a few stumps, little off, little, um, not exactly square, but um, our boat is traveling down the slalom course and what I'm gonna draw is the path of the handle, okay? So here is a very long rope with a handle on the end of it, okay? What we're drawing is a representation of the boat looking down from above and the camera is sort of traveling with the boat, bird's eye perspective on the boat. Um, let's call buoy width, oh geez, that's not exactly straight. Buoy width is the width of the page, okay? Ignore this line here. This handle, in order to swing out to buoy width, okay, is going to arc about that much, okay? So the arc of that handle, oh, this is so tricky, is about that. That's, that's the handle arc that we're dealing with, or the swing arc, okay? In order to get that handle out to buoy width, the handle has to sort of swing like that. I do hope you're with me. Now, when the rope is short, let's say this short, okay, I was attempting to draw a handle there. Um, we're dealing with a rope which is about 11 meters, if you were talking in slalom course sort of measurements, because from boat to buoy width is about 11 and a half meters. So once you're on 38 off, um, your rope is about this long, okay? Now the swing arc, okay, of a short rope to get buoy width, okay, on a short rope, if I draw that path there, I haven't drawn the boat in the middle, so it's a little tricky. Um, but as you can see there, like that's a far more aggressive swing arc on the handle. If I were to draw that in, you're then seeing a very aggressive swing arc relative to a long line where there's not much swing arc at all. Um, this is probably the worst drawing I've done out of all the videos, but I feel like I'm getting the point out a little better in this video. So we're gonna continue with the worst drawing yet. Um, all you need to really get from this is that the swing arc of a short rope, um, the handle swing arc that is, is very aggressive, a big swing. And the swing arc of a long rope is pretty shallow. You're kind of just zigzagging. There's not much swing happening really on a short, on a um, long rope. I do hope I didn't just do those two backwards. This is short rope. This is long rope. Alrighty, ask questions if you're lost already. It gets harder. The problem, okay, well, maybe not the problem, but the dynamic that you're dealing with when in the slalom course is a long line skier 
the preferable path is this, wide and early, okay? If you're on 18 meters, go wide and early, as wide and early as you can almost, okay? The problem with skiing wide and early on a long rope is that you don't really get much help from the handle. The handle's not swinging much. It's just kind of getting dragged from one side to another. So we're asking you to do a very big swing through the course, but the handle's not helping you much. Okay, it's just going from side to side. So you have to really be intentional and really force this big aggressive swing through the slalom course. But then as the rope gets shorter and it requires you to ski a more direct path through the slalom course, you then begin to deal with a very aggressive swing arc on the handle itself. And with an aggressive swing arc on the handle, you're on a short line, which makes this impossible. But the swing arc of the handle kind of almost forces you to run a path like this. And you must really aggressively head a little bit more direct towards the buoy than what the swing arc is kind of wanting you to do because um, it'll easily start to like put you here and swing you out early on a really aggressive trajectory which will just get you to a point where um, you begin to get very separated from the handle. And it's at some point, I mean, if you do your imaginary um, experiments with this on a piece of paper, um, like I attempted to do in a few other videos and it all got far too confusing, I feel, to do in front of the camera. But I mean, at some point, like with your boat traveling down the course and your skier trying to run this path here, you go the next step and it's just, it's not possible for the ski to continue on this wide and early path if you have a short rope. And so that's kind of the dichotomy you're playing with here. Um, on a long rope, you get very little assistance from the handle swing arc, but we're requiring a huge swing arc through the slalom course, um, as far as what your ski is doing. And then on a short rope, you're getting a huge swing arc from the handle. It's just sending you in these crazy trajectories, like straight out to the bank if you want to. But the laws of physics demand that you ski a little straighter um, and more direct just to make it plausible to actually get that handle through the slalom course. Because at some point on a short rope, unless you've swung that handle high enough on the side of the boat, there's no point letting go of it and reaching away from it. Um, because you can only separate from the handle a finite amount. And if the handle itself hasn't swung high enough on the boat, your max separation from the handle may still be inside the buoy. Okay, so that is path of the ski and path of the handle or handle arc relative to the boat and path of ski relative to the slalom course itself. Now, to merge those two together and really grasp what's happening out there in the slalom course, you have to understand the location of your body relative to the handle and eventually the ski itself, but we're just gonna talk body relative to handle for now. Um, I'll explain this by giving a scenario. Let's say you're approaching the buoy and by all accounts, you're wide and early, okay? The location of your body is wide and early. You're looking at the buoy, it's multiple meters or feet in front of you, it's a little to the inside, you're already wider than the buoy as you approach it, and by all accounts, okay, in a traditional sense, you're wide and early. Now, because we're not talking about body position, it's still possible to be in that location where everybody agrees you are wide and early, and have all hell break loose and find yourself attempting to accomplish something that is completely impossible. Even if the path you were trying to ski was plausible, okay, you were on track relative to the swing arc, um, you can still have made an error. And what I'm getting at is if, you are, if your body is wide and early, okay, but you've separated from that handle, okay, you're not going to be able to get to the buoy, the boat will begin to drag you 
prior to you getting to the buoy because when you swing up on the side, you're losing speed. At some point, the boat will go faster than you and it's gonna drag away from you and that's all just normal part of skiing. But if that's happening too soon, just because your location is wide and early and the buoy is a long way inside, if you're separated from the handle and the boat starts to drag you prior to you getting to the buoy, it can then become impossible, even though you had the swing arc correct and the path was plausible in the outset. So to negate that, you just sort of stay closer to the handle off the second wake. It depends um, on your rope length and your skiing style as to the degree to which you do that at a Longer line, it generally just becomes sort of keeping a bit of a bend in your elbow as you let go of the handle. But I mean, that's not the purpose of this video. I just feel like um, a lot of skiers could progress much faster if they really understood the dynamic between the path your ski is taking through the slalom course and how that changes as the rope gets shorter, meaning that you do a large swing through the course and you cover a lot of distance on a long rope. And then on a short rope, you take a little bit more of a direct path from buoy to buoy. And then the handle arc that then correlates with that, where on a short rope, you're dealing with a huge swing arc of the handle. And on a long line, you're dealing with a very shallow swing arc, which basically just gives you very little swing and you're kind of zigzagging your way across the course, despite the fact that you've got this big swing arc from an aerial perspective on the ski path itself. And then, to sync those two together and compute in your own mind what is plausible at any one time, you must really understand your location relative to that handle. Because if you've separated yourself a long way away from that handle and you're still intending to run the path um, that we all sort of want you to be running, which is generally quite wide and early, that path itself may be impossible just like it's impossible on a short rope it may be impossible on a long rope purely because even though you were doing it all correctly you've come off that second wake you've let go of the handle early or you've just thrown it away quickly even though you did it at the right point but at some point you've just let that handle get very separated and the boat is beginning to drag you into the course and all hell breaks loose even though in your own mind the other two aspects were going well um, I really do feel like when I'm skiing, that's what I'm computing. I'm not really out there thinking about body position. I'm out there with an awareness of my location relative to the handle, the handle arc, where I am in the handle arc, whether I've got enough speed on that arc of the handle to do what I'm chasing. And those equations in my mind all equal the path that I decide or attempt to ski through the course. They're, that's the calculations I'm making in my mind when I run through the slalom course. Um, it's generally not me out there thinking about body position. And I really do believe when you get to these short lines, um, that is what becomes most important, an understanding of what is possible at any one point. I always felt like the shorter lines, um, given the margin for error is so small, I always felt like they'd be super repetitive and super consistent and it would just feel the same each time but your margin for error is so small um, that you actually end up making a lot of different decisions out there on those short lines the short lines um, i know they are very repetitive um, as far as margin for error goes but the decisions made on a short line um, they must be quite accurate um, but that doesn't mean that there's not a lot of decision making going on out there in the course like when i'm skiing on a short rope i'm constantly assessing the situation and making a decision based on that current situation i'm not out there attempting to ski the same path that i always ski because even though I would love to do that, I'm generally becoming aware of something causing that to not be the correct path anymore because 
the handles got a bit separated or because I'm a little slow off the second wake and I know I'm not going to get the normal swing arc that I would typically get. So I am required to sort of arc inside the buoy and then release late and more, more use sort of a centrifugal force approach to throwing the ski out rather than like riding the, the correct trajectory off the second wake and splitting off from the handle at, the, at a nice point. Um, I do hope that gives people a bit of a grasp of what we're out there calculating. Um, for sure we lost everyone that's not a hard out water skier by now, um, but cheers for the um, good question. Keep the questions coming. And yeah, send me some videos. Um, let's do some um, coaching. I know it's nice and warm over in the States right now. So um, yeah, send me your videos. Thanks crew, catch you later.